The first tool, um, obligatory referendum, no use uh, in France. It's not obligatory. The second tool, uh, citizen initiated referendum. So this is a, a, a demand and a strong demand uh, in France, especially since the Yellow Vest movement. And there is a strong um, opposition from uh, the ruling parties uh, to, to really accommodate this demand. So we, this is, well, we, we talk a lot about direct democracy, uh, but, but there is no concrete tools, right, that um, French citizens can use. And, and it's, it's, it's not because they don't want, they would love to have that, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's extremely difficult. There is a lot of, um, yeah, opposition and reluctance from a lot of political parties to devise functioning tools and give citizens more say. There are a few figures that uh, show this. So first off, 80% um, of uh, the French people did not want a second round for the presidential election opposing Emmanuel Macron with Marine Le Pen. And look what we have, a second round opposing uh, Macron and Marine Le Pen. So we expect that uh, the turnout will be, will be very low because uh, people are dissatisfied. The level also of distrust and dissatisfaction with the way uh, democracy is functioning is is high too, but at the same time it is um, uh, associated with a very strong concern for the quality of democracy. This is something that matters and strong demands um, to have to have more influence over uh, decision making. And maybe a, a worrying figure is that uh, in a survey from last December, 20% of of the French people feel that they live in an authoritarian regime. And that's not a surprise because since the Yellow Vest movement, as I said, have been a lot of demands for more uh, for direct democracy, what we call in French the RIC, Citizen Initiated Referendum, Referendum d'Initiative Citoyenne. Um, but the answer has always been no. No, we're gonna we're gonna give you something else. You know, you're gonna have a citizen assembly, but it's not what what citizens are um, are demanding. But it does not matter because uh, there is this feeling that, that this demand uh, will not be um, yeah, uh, heard. And uh, in, uh, during this campaign with, with uh, other movements uh, advocating for uh, direct democracy uh, mechanisms, we have, um, we have created a survey uh, with uh, uh, the leading uh, opinion polls in, in France. And we found again that 73% of the French citizens are willing to have a more direct say on constitutional matters. So proposing constitutional amendments and voting this constitutional amendment. So that's that's a very, very large majority. And the other question we also ask that is very relevant because, you know, on this matter, sometimes um, it is often said that, yes, people like direct democracy, but it's not their priority. So we ask another question, I think, how important it is for you, direct democracy, how important it is uh, in your selection of a candidate for the, um, for the election. And we found that uh, over 60%, for over 60% of the respondents, that is something important. So that is something that is leading their choice for a specific candidate. So yeah, strong dissatisfaction, strong demand, a lot of also um, uh, civil society organizations. You know, we had over in this, I think, presidential election, we had uh, more than, than 35 candidates. Some of them did not make it to the first round, uh, as, for example, I, because I was part of a movement uh, presenting, who presented a candidate on direct democracy and democratic reform, and I was selected as the, uh, as the candidate. We got uh, the sponsorship of uh, 36 elected officials, uh, because maybe something that people don't know is that to be able to compete in the first round of the presidential election, you need the support of 500 mayors, uh, mayors, uh, elected officials. Could be at the so most of them are mayors, um, and it's very difficult to get the support because we speak a lot about the the, the, the abstention of uh, the, the fact that that people don't vote anymore, but elected officials in France don't vote neither. So the fact that there is a lot of uh, mayors, for example, a lot of mayors um, don't want to support any candidate because they don't want to get involved into uh, this discussion, which is a problem because they have the key for a more, you know, diverse uh, set of candidates to the uh, election.
Yes, uh, but at the same time, both stances are very uh, disappointing. Um, so first, Macron has never uh, hidden that he's a strong opponent uh, to direct democracy. He believes a lot in citizen conventions. So he was the one who uh, uh, created the um, uh, yeah, climate citizen convention with the outcome that actually he, he refused some of the of the proposals. So this created a lot of dissatisfaction. Is um, yeah, not 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 in support at all. Not open even to discuss uh, these issues. But what is uh, more worrying is that the state of the debate on direct democracy in, in France is quite uh, mediocre, right? I mean, the arguments are not good. The, the the level of knowledge is is really not the one that you can see in countries such as the Netherlands, uh, where I live, or Germany. We are really backward a bit in this sense. So that was also important to, to, to promote direct democracy. So Macron was clear, strong opponent, uh, not a supporter of direct democracy, refused to discuss about it. He even said after the Yellow Vest movement, he, he set up this big debate and uh, he even mentioned, well, I'm ready to speak about everything, but not about direct democracy. So not about citizen initiative referendum. Le Pen is more ambiguous uh, because she uh, keeps saying that she wants a citizen to have uh, more control. But she's also feeding a bit the confusion between government initiated referendums, because she wants to use a lot of referendums, but these are not citizen initiated referendums. These are, you know, referendums initiated by um, the government, such as the Brexit, for example, referendum. And this is just not at all the same tune. This is not direct democracy. This is a president trying to legitimize some key decision, calling a referendum, but deciding of the question. And she also mentions so, uh, citizen initiated referendum, but the way she, the design she has in mind is uh, gives very, very little control to uh, uh, the citizens. So she's she refuses um, to uh, have citizen initiated referendum on constitutional matters, as it is the case in Switzerland, in Uruguay, uh, in the Palau Island, Island, for example. And even if, as I said, 73% of the people are uh, uh, demanding that. And she also created a very weird system where actually the parliament and the president can oppose a citizen initiative on the topic if they consider it as too extreme. So, well, then depends if it's the president. So, for example, she gave two examples that were actually very bad examples because the two examples were um, already adopted in, in Switzerland, for example. So she said, yeah, for example, of course, I will never, ever agree with a referendum that is leading us to stop a closed nuclear power plant. Or I will never, ever have a referendum to discuss of uh, the level, like the type of arms that the uh, police can use. So they were like, for her, this was extreme cases. But if you look at the type of debate we have in other countries, this is not extreme, right? This is like usual uh, uh, debate on this uh, story. So this is also, yes, creating a lot of confusion also among uh, the people who are willing to get direct democracy because they think uh, maybe, you know, voting Le Pen is a safe choice uh, because she says, she says she, she likes direct democracy. And as there is no also, the media is not really playing this role in saying, no, but look at what she is proposing. You know, this is not this is not direct democracy. Uh, then this, for me, uh, created, a, yeah, still creates a lot of, of, of confusion. What we did with other um, uh, yeah, activist groups is, is really to not only put pressure on the two candidates, uh, both Macron and Le Pen, uh, to include a citizen initiative referendum on constitutional matters, uh, but also to to pressure the media for having not only a discussion on, because the discussion is not anymore on whether or not direct democracy is a good thing. I think we all agree this is a good thing and, and the level of support from, from French people is high, but it's about what is a well-functioning tool? What, what What is a good citizen initiative referendum? What is a good design and what is a bad design? So yeah, right now it's uh, clearly disappointing because we have two candidates who basically, yes, are not the stronger defenders on earth of uh, direct democracy, let's put it this way. But a lot has happened in this campaign and, and I may sound a bit negative, but, but I'm not because, uh, for example, we had a candidate uh, who is a, a low-key candidate and his name is Jean Lassalle, you probably 
uh, don't know him, not a lot of people know him, but he was the only one who um, agreed in uh, proposing a very well designed, because it, basically it was designed by uh, our team of experts and um, uh, a colleague in political science, his name is Raoul Maniberton, is the expert in, in France of uh, direct democracy, he designed the a law proposal. So he was the one who you know, submitted this law proposal to introduce citizen initiative in, in a constitutional matter. Uh, he agreed to um, implement this as a, as a top priority if he was to be elected, if he were to be elected president. And he even did something that is quite unusual is that he um, committed to uh, end over all of his uh, financial assets uh, if he uh, did not, if he would not, uh, uh, yeah, meet this uh, this uh, commitment. That this is something also the, the group I represented during this presidential campaign created this idea to to have a commitment that is a strong commitment, uh, a private contract leading a candidate to lose his financial uh, assets if um, he or she did not meet um, his or her commitment. So yeah, that's uh, uh, so we had we had progress. I mean, uh, direct democracy is really visible. A lot of people are talking about it. Um, and, and we continue this work with a lot of movement to, that is also about um, assessing the proposal. Um, so do these proposals give power over the constitution? That is the most important uh, power you can get because you can then change everything. Is uh, the tool functioning? So is there somehow, do you ask for a huge threshold of signatures? Uh, or is it is it you know reasonable? Uh, are there uh, criteria for the referendum to be valid? So we are continuing this pressure. We've also a lot of uh, uh, citizen movement. We are presenting candidates for the legislative elections because uh, there is the, the also the, we have in France always uh, the same same year the presidential election and the legislative election. Um, and we we are also uh, somehow organizing and and in in a better way to be more able to to continue this this pressure. So I'm I'm fairly hopeful for the future because I think that a huge step has been made, um, and that there is also much more coordination between the different groups, and that now the issue is on the table. So now we see resistance, but a lot of people know what it is. A lot of people are asking that. And it means that, yeah, if we stay united in saying this is what we want, um, then then at some point we'll get it, you know.